Hey guys, what's going on everybody? It's Mr. Samicam here and welcome back to another BTS reaction. Welcome back to another quite a long reaction, guys. It's gonna be another one of these videos, which by the looks of it is like one of those documentary style ones. It's gonna be half an hour long. It's called The Most Beautiful Life Goes On, A Story of BTS. Now we've checked out quite a few other videos like this in the past, like going through BTS's storyline, you know, their struggles, like everything they've been through in their career. Nobody's to Legends by XLS was a good example of that. But apparently this one is reasonably new it's just come out a couple of weeks ago and there's going to be quite a bit of stuff in here which i didn't necessarily know about before so i'm really looking forward to checking it out get your popcorn guys it's going to be quite a long video today so uh yeah hopefully you should all enjoy and without further ado let's jump right into it but yeah, as always, guys, just before we do jump into it, if you're brand new to my channel, you've never seen my face before, and you have been enjoying these BTS reactions you've been seeing here, make sure you are subscribed down below, guys. Click that button, become a part of the family. We'd love to have you here. We do upload these reaction videos every single day. It's completely free, and you can always change your mind. And if you'd like to support me even further, top right of my screen is my Instagram and my Twitter. I'm Mr. Sammy Cam on both of them. I post updates on new videos, do little live streams and stuff like that. So it's definitely worth going to give me a follow if you haven't yet. And last, last thing, over on my Patreon, guys, which will be linked down below. We do upload BTS Run and BTS Bon Voyage reactions every other day. We also have almost 70 of them up right now that you can go and unlock just by becoming a Patreon. It also helps to greatly support the channel, so that'd be amazing, guys. And uh, yeah, without further ado, the, beauty, the most beautiful life goes on. A story of BTS. Really looking forward to getting into this. A half an hour video. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's see their journey. Here we go. Asian, an Asian theory. The Asian theory is the person who made this. We're not going to cry, are we? Kim Namjoon. Kim Sokjin. Look at Yoongi glowing. Look at the gold tone in his skin. Ooh, hello. Hello. Is this man even human? Kim Taehyun. Dude, this, okay, this is already looking like a movie. I don't know what this is, guys, but this is looking like some good quality kind of, you know, very good editing. Props to this guy. There they are. That's an early one, that. Oh, this is fake love, like a acoustic. <laughs> Jimin in those glasses. I swear, Jimin in round glasses is just like the best thing. Dude, these graphics are... Whoa! This guy's nuts! Today, everyone knows the name Here of is. BTS. They've been invited onto late night talk shows, they've shattered records, they've sold out stadiums, they've made it onto the big screen. These days, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who didn't know who these guys were, or at least haven't heard one of their songs. And if True. they don't, either they've been living under a rock, or they're 100 years old. The success I mean that was me about nine months ago so I can't really talk much but yeah I mean they've, they've grown so much in the last nine months that, that like in the last nine months that literally everyone's heard their name but the bang 10 it's boys crazy. is worldwide but it wasn't always like this and it all started with one man oh there he is YG there he YG is. wanted to make himself a rap group in the late 90s, he experimented with this idea with different trainees, eventually choosing seven members. And while three of them eventually left, the remaining four, Teddy, Danny, Jinhwan, and Baekhyung, debuted in 1998 as one time. Their first album, oh titled God, this One is Early, Mind, was one of the year's best-selling albums and won several awards, including the Global Disc and SBS Music Awards. For Damn, so we're taking it right back now. Like, th this is stuff that I never even knew about. I was assuming they were going to start with BTS's debut, but they're going way back. Artist and KMTV's award for best hip-hop artist. The group enjoyed moderate success and released four more albums before going on in the quality of this video. in 2006 due to their mandatory military service. The year was 2010, and the five-year-old company, Big Hit Entertainment, had previously signed two artists, 88 and 2AM. They had their share of successes, but they were very traditional K-pop groups. Big Hit wanted a fresh new sound, and upon listening to One Time, CEO Hitman Bang si Hyuk had decided that that was the sound that he was looking for. And on top of that, the youth needed someone to relate to, and more importantly, look up to. He had decided he would create a hip-hop group. Ooh, <laughs> oh my god. And then birthed Rap Monster. <laughs> At 15 years old, 
Kim Namjoon auditioned for a certain Big Deal Records, which he completely botched, forgetting the lyrics to the song he was performing. Oh Afterwards, no! Afterwards, fellow rapper Sleepy recommended that he try auditioning at another label, Big Hit, and even put in a good word for him to one of the producers there. At age 16, Kim auditioned in front of Bang Si Hyuk himself, and instantly impressed him. He was offered to deal with Big Hit on the spot, which Kim accepted and became a trainee, officially choosing a name oh for himself, God. Rap Monster, destined to become the leader of the newly created group. Look at him! <laughs> <laughs> now that a fearless leader was chosen, they needed more members. Oh, here we go. Group assemble. Bring on Yugi. <laughs> Min Yonggi was a 17-year-old living in Daegu, an avid basketball player and rapper. He had been interested in music, especially rap, basketball from player. a very early age. And despite his parents- See, I've heard Yoongi talk about basketball. I always thought he was kind of, it was just a hobby on the side, but this was actually like a long running one then, even before he joined BTS. Disapproval? Started performing as a rapper while still in high school. He quickly gained attention as a rapper and producer in the underground hip hop scene. One day he saw a flyer for a rap competition called Hit It and decided to participate. And although he only placed second, the company hosting the competition, you guessed it, Big Hit, decided to sign him on as a producer. So he Hitman saw Bang a flyer and that's how it happened. Convincing him to join a newly created hip hop group. He told him to just focus on rapping and assured him that he wouldn't need to dance. He was lying. And just like that, the new group <laughs> had a second lying. member known as Suga, a combination of the first two syllables of shooting guard, his favorite position in basketball. But they wouldn't- No, so basketball is huge. What? <laughs> Stop there. Rappers were nice, but Big Hit actually needed a dancer. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Jung Ho Sok always loved dancing. He was in the starting lineup of the dance crew Neuron in baby, his hometown. Yeah, baby Hong Hobie. Jin. He was good at it too, winning several local championships and even winning a championship at the national level in 2008. When he decided to audition for JYP Entertainment though, after a few rounds of auditions, he was cut. Fortunately, he didn't oh. give up and went to his second option, a smaller, lesser known company. Big hit entertainment. Oh, His dance skills and God he understanding did. of rhythm made him an instant favorite, and he was signed on as J Hope. Not only that, but they saw potential in him to become a rapper, which at this point he had little experience with. However, potential? Wait, so he had little experience with rapping back then, and now he's just. I mean, have you heard him? Have you heard him go? I mean, they spotted that potential well because it was, was definitely there. J Hope quickly felt that he wasn't a good fit and decided to leave Big Hit until what? RM convinced both J-Hope and Big Hit that the group wouldn't be complete without him. He was right. <laughs> Guys, I'm learning so much from this. So J-Hope left because he didn't think it was a good fit, but then RM brought him back in. Oh my God. So RM and J-Hope, dude. Uh, mm. <laughs> wow. With the addition of J-Hope, the rap line was complete. Now they needed some singers. Now, just like how RM, an amazing rapper with a ton of experience, was chosen as the first official member of the rap line, it would only make sense that a legendary singer and dancer would be the perfect first member of the Ooh. vocal line. Who's right? it gonna be? Oh, of course. Of course. It's Sokjin himself. Worldwide but handsome. But Kim Sokjin didn't have any sort of experience like that. Believe it or oh. not, one day when he was walking on the streets of his hometown, Anyang, he was approached by a representative of SM Entertainment with an offer to work for the company. In typical Jin fashion, he never followed up with them because he believed it to be a scam. Apparently, Jin was a very good looking guy because years later, this time as a college student in Seoul, he was once again approached on the street, this time by an executive at Big Hit Entertainment. Is that what happens? You, they just approach them on the street. Is that like a normal thing to happen? Because that seems quite random. Like... But thank God they did, my word. He didn't sing, he didn't dance. He was at school to become an actor and he decided to audition to become an actor. Big Hit, however, had different plans for him and convinced him to become a vocalist for their new group. To do Wait. so, he literally learned to dance and sing starting from zero, but thankfully, not without help from other vocalists. Wait. Oh no. Oh, here he comes. Oh no. Oh wait, Dun -dun. so, okay, hang on. Let me just get my head around this. He had no experience dancing or singing. He wanted to become an actor, but they've done what they've done to him. Like, have you heard this guy sing? Have you seen this guy dance? Cook initially had dreams of becoming a bandman player when he was young, but after seeing G-Dragon perform Heartbreaker on television, it influenced him to want to become a singer instead. Because of this, oh. at only age 14, he decided to audition for the South Korean talent show, Superstar 14. K. He didn't pass auditions. 
but this was just enough okay. to catch the eye of not one company, not two companies, but seven different companies. Oh my this God. included JYP, FNC, Woolum, Starship Entertainment, TS, Cube, and of course, Big Hit Entertainment. So why did Jungkook, given Good the choice, choice of all these bigger companies, decide to go with the relatively smaller company, Big Hit? The answer was simple. Because he thought, and I quote, RM was cool, so I wanted to sign with them. That brings the no! to No! RM was the cool! The BTS was just as surprised to find Big Hit as Big Hit was to find him. And it almost didn't happen. Dude, th these are just, it's just the most random things. Like, Yoongi found a flyer, Jin got met on the street, uh, Jungkook thought RM was cool. Like, it's all these things that just came together. Like, it's meant to be, man. I'm a big believer in that. Oh my god, here we go. Here we go. Kim Taeyong. Kim Taeyong was always passionate about music, and it was always his dream to pursue it as a career. However, it was hard, as his family was poor, his parents being humble farmers. His father told him that if he was passionate about music, he should learn an instrument, and he did, spending three years practicing with the saxophone. Wow. One day, one of his friends decided to audition for Big Hit Entertainment when they were holding auditions in his hometown of Daegu. Taeyong, being a good friend, came with him to keep him company, but when one of the team members in charge of the audition saw Taeyong, he encouraged him to audition as well. With nothing no. He did. That day, he was the only Dude. one in Daegu to move on to the next round of auditions, and eventually. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for carrying on pausing, but each one of these story, like each one of these stories, is just so random and so like, how did this happen? It's just so lucky. He did. That you know day, I mean? he was the only one in Daegu to move on to the next round of auditions, and eventually became a trainee for Big Hit Entertainment. They decided to keep him as a surprise member and didn't want to reveal him as one of the members until his debut. In the same vein, Big Hit had him choose something mysterious for his stage name. He decided to go with V for victory. Here seems like a v nice for round number to stop, right? Six members for a new hip hop group, three rappers and three vocalists. It seems like a complete group, but still there was no, something missing. There's something Some missing. One was missing. We know Someone exactly could take what this it already is. Already great group of artists and push it even further to achieve perfection. Here we go. A powerhouse. Someone Roll so on the naturally angel. talented that they could stand out in a room full of already talented artists. This project that Big Hit had embarked upon needed a capstone. There we go. <laughs> Hello, Park, Park Jimin. Jimin. Was a naturally talented dancer. When he was in middle school, he Baby attended a Jimin. dance academy and continued to pursue dance at Busan High School of Arts, where he studied contemporary dance and was the top student in the whole modern dance department. Wow. Impressed by his raw God talent, damn, look the at those legs. encouraged him to audition for Big Hit Entertainment, who were holding auditions in Busan. He was only 16 when he passed the audition and moved to Seoul to become a trainee. He was the final member of the group, and he also baby had the face. shortest training period. What's interesting to note is that the group feels very much ragtag because in a sense, with the exception of Jimin, it was. RM and J-Hope only auditioned for Big Hit because they didn't pass their auditions with the first company they chose. And despite their amazing talent, Suga and Jungkook didn't win the competitions they were in, but they signed yeah. on to Big Hit after the fact because so of their random. high performances. V never even planned on auditioning and just decided to do it on a whim. And they literally just found Jin on the street. <laughs> but perhaps it was fate. Because this- Dude, it's all fate. Like it's all so random. And it's like, how did this happen? It's just luck. Man. was the group that they chose. And just Look like that, <laughs> in 2012, the newly created what a weird mix. Dan, the Bulletproof Boy Scouts, or simply BTS, was seven. Oh my so god. They had the group, but they still needed the music. In early 2013, That's true. they set out to create some social media presence for themselves before officially debuting, posting song covers on both SoundCloud and YouTube which you can still go watch today. In May, Wait. Big Hit launched a countdown clock on their website in preparation for BTS's debut album, complete with a trailer and a ton of promotional material, including photos for the first time oh, of there all the are. members in the official lineup. God, all that dark clothing and eyeliner. Oh, here we go. Big Hit exclusive. Finally, the big day came. June 12, 2013. BTS held a press conference and a debut showcase where they performed their two singles, No More Dream, <laughs> and We Are Bulletproof Part 2. Look. Oh my god, the image is so different. The same day, the Too Cool For School album, as well as the music video for No More Dream, were released. <laughs> Dude, I can't. Like, how... Look, oh my god, look at Jimin's hat. Like, how, how can a group change this much and evolve this much? It's crazy. The very next day, BTS performed the song again on their official debut stage on Mnet's M Countdown. 
YOLO across this the show. This was the world's first taste of BTS. Commercially, the album didn't do extraordinarily well. The lead single, No More Dream, peaked at 124 in Korea, and the album sold only 24,000 copies during its first year. Bulletproof Part 2 didn't even chart. The first year wasn't wow. all that great for BTS, but despite everything, people saw them. <laughs> People saw the sparkle in their eyes and their limitless potential. And they were hot, of course. On July 9th, ARMY was they established as BTS's official fandom. They made their comeback only two months later in September when they released their single, No, <laughs> that got that smile. Part it's 2 already, of what would be their there. school trilogy, Oh, Are You Late 2. In the music video for the single, they made a commentary on the harsh Korean education ah. system. Wait, so they've gone from, they've gone straight from black to white here, like complete color change. Two. In the music video for the single, they made a commentary on the harsh Korean education system, along with their previous themes of hopes and dreams. No peaked at 92, Such Korea, a cool music but also video. quickly fell off the charts. The album debuted at number 4 on the Gaon Weekly chart, and See, was the 55th best selling album going. in South Korea that year. This was enough to secure them the coveted New Artist of the Year Award at the Melon Music Awards, the Golden Disc there Awards, and the Soul Music Awards. That's the start. Part 3 There's of the that, School Trilogy was in February of 2014, the EP School Love Affair. This time, the lead single was Boy in Love. <laughs> <laughs> And the other single being Just One Day. Oh, I like this one. This is a good one. The album, as well as both singles, enjoyed moderate success, with the album topping the Gaon album chart, as well as making its first international appearance at number wow. three on the Billboard World Albums chart. The wow. album also marked their first distinctive change in theme, focusing more on school life and young love, as evidenced by their Boy in Love music video. Mm -hmm. They also held their first fan meetings with a crowd of 3,000 in Seoul. Oh, BTS look at the was doing well. That is wow. until July. This is unfortunately Wait. a dark chapter in the lives of BTS and ARMY. That's right, American Hustle Life. I'm joking, of course, but American Hustle Life was a what? reality show put together by Mnet that brought BTS to Los Angeles where they had the unique opportunity to learn the true ways of hip hop from the masters. And Wait, it was what a pretty this? darn cringy opportunity, but an opportunity nonetheless. Uh, whatever you do, just don't watch the Warren G version of Boy in Love. You've been warned. However, cringe and all, the trip proved fruitful for BTS, making connections, performing their first US concert for free in front of 200 fans, as well as their first appearance wow. at KCON. The next month, in August, BTS released their first full-length studio album, Dark and Wild. The album featured- Dude, this, I've never heard of that. Like, where they went out to the US and got trained by hip-hop artists, I guess? Two singles, Danger. Oh, Danger. Danger. And War of Hormones. <laughs> Oh my god, that bit. <laughs> the album featured a marked shift in sound with a touch of R&B and electronica. It was met with moderate success. It peaked at number two in Korea, selling over 200,000 albums. In October, wow. and again in May of the following year, BTS won on their first and second concert tours, known as the Red Bullet Tour, where they visited 13 yeah. different countries, including Japan, the Philippines, Ooh, look Australia, at this. the US, Mexico, and many others. They also came out with their first Japanese album in December, Wake Up, featuring many Japanese versions of their songs, as well as original tracks Wake Up and the Stars, followed by a Japan tour and a solo concert in Korea. So much stuff they're doing, man, in such a short amount of time. Although Dark and Wild got decent attention, they needed something different. They needed something that would shake things up. They got to work. You can April see them growing up, kind of. was their comeback. When this album was produced, each member had a hand in writing songs for the album. They again changed their sound from aggressive hip hop to youthful, colorful styles. And not only their Ooh. sound, but their image as well. This can Dude, be Dude, I love this. That switch was the best thing they've ever done, in my opinion. Like, I, that's what I see when I see BTS now is like kind of youthful, color, kind of, you know, just like good, mature energy. And the way they switch from what they had to this. By their newest genius. EP, the most beautiful moment in life. And just by looking at the album cover, they ditched the dark colors and the bulletproof vest symbol that had become so synonymous with BTS and replaced it with a simple white and pink back. The amount of courage that it takes to do something like that, like switch what everyone know, like what you're known for to do something else, like that's a huge risk. Ground overlaid with the title. And then they dropped the single that would change everything. Oh, I no. need you. Oh, here we go. See, this is still quite it dark in a way. Sentimental. It was hopeful. It was new. Just by looking at the music video, we can see that BTS has also ditched their punk bad boy image and replaced it with wow. a more real, vulnerable, down to earth, and youthful feel. Vulnerable. This that's the it. That BTS needed for mainstream success. Billboard called it one of the greatest K-pop songs of the decade. 
It charted at number five in Korea and even led them to their first music show win on SBS MTV's The Show. Wow. And that wasn't all. They released their second single, Dope, on June 24th, oh, which started off with a poignant line from RM. Hmm? <laughs> Welcome. Is this your first time with BTS? And you know what? For a lot of people, it was. It was. In a way, their first studio album and tour can be seen as their stepping stone between old school BTS and new school. In November, they came back with their follow-up EP, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Part 2, the second EP in what would be dubbed the Youth Trilogy, which featured the single, Run. Oh, classic. The album focused even more on the frivolity. Dude, we're getting more. We're getting the bangers now. We're starting to go into the, into the kind of like the, the, where they're kind of finding their sound kind of thing. And they're sounding a lot more mature. The friendship and which I love. attitude that comes with enjoying one's youth. But just like in I Need You, contrasted that with suffering, depression, loneliness, society, and the stark and sometimes Real stuff. dark reality And this is the storyline, isn't it? Compare this with the far cry of the No More Dreams music video. It felt real. It was darker, grittier, more humble, more meaningful, and most importantly, RM Humble. lost his mohawk. Run also connected <laughs> narrative with their lost the previous single, brush. I Need You. And another video released in September titled On Stage Prologue established what would come to be known as the BTS universe, or the BU. Ooh. This is a big part of it, man. Which would eventually combine music videos, short films, books, short stories, webtoons, and even a mobile game to create a cohesive story. And I won't go down this rabbit hole because there is a lot to digest, but it's definitely mm -hmm. something to look into if you're a hardcore. And I've still got to do the webtoon, guys. I've still got to do the webtoon very soon, very soon. Hardcore army. I'm still the not even month, done with it. They That's how deep it is. They kicked off their third tour. The most beautiful moment in life on stage tour where they performed songs from their two recent EPs, part one and part two. And part two was a hit their biggest so far. It topped the Weekly Gallon wow. album and Billboard World Albums charts. And on Billboard, Damn. it stayed there for multiple weeks. The first K-pop act to do so. It also appeared on the Billboard 200 albums chart. Not world albums, which was reserved for foreign non-English songs, but simply the top 200 albums, peaking wow. at 171. There you go, they're breaking into amazing, the world wide now. This was back in 2015. They also received Best World Performer at the 17th Mnet Asian Music Awards. This brings us to part three of the Youth Trilogy. The Most Beautiful Moment in Life, Young Forever, released oh, on May 2nd, 2016, which featured probably my favorite BTS album cover. Young Forever was actually a compilation album of parts one and two, so it was mostly the same songs, but it was notable that it had some new singles, Epilogue, Young Forever, Fire, and Save Me. Young the latter two Forever, performed Save Me, well, so many tunes. topping the Billboard World Digital Songs chart. This was also the second BTS album to chart on the Billboard 200 at 107, and it topped both wow. the Gowan weekly and monthly chart, which earned BTS their first Daesung. Damn. Album Look how the much they've grown as the well. Melon Music Awards. They went on to do the second half of their tour, the most beautiful moment in life on stage epilogue, selling out many of their concerts and even selling out KCON in the US where they headlined Damn. the event. In September, Look at them they dropped go. their second Japanese album, Youth featuring Japanese versions of tracks from their previous three EPs. Which went gold and peaked at number one on Japanese charts. Wow. And only a month later, number in October 2016, it happened. BTS dropped their second studio album, Wings. It Ooh, sold over 500,000 copies in its first week. In comparison, The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 1, released just the previous year, which topped the gown chart, sold about 500,000 in its entire lifetime. Wings was big, but in the true week. showstopper was in a its week. lead single, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Oh, this is big time now. Which got them their Dang first it. all kill, topping eight music charts in South Korea. Its music video gained six million views in the first 24 hours, which broke the YouTube record for the highest number of views of a K pop group music video within 24 hours. Wow. The album hit number two. <laughs> and then, like, they did 100 million with Dynamite, dude. That is crazy. 26 on the Billboard 200, the highest ever charting K pop album on Billboard. They ended up selling 1.5 million copies in South Korea in 2016 alone, and it netted them the Artist of the Year award at the Mnet Asian Music Awards that same year, the first non-Big 3 artist ever to receive that award. <laughs> Look at RM though, he's so like, 
That's what you've got to realize with these guys. That's why so many people love them is they've remained so humble throughout all of this. Like, it's just, it's just crazy. When you think about how big they are and everything like that, and they're still this down to earth and like they, you can relate to them so much. It's like, it's just incredible. After blood, sweat and tears, just like they were on a roll. Them. BTS was unstoppable. In February of 2017, they released the instant hit Spring Day, which, quoting a Korean reviewer, embodied nostalgia and sorrow and opened a new chapter in BTS's it. aesthetics and lyricism and attracted fans across generations. It's a beautiful boundaries. song, man. Which, it's such by a the way, beautiful is still song. still on Korean charts. After nearly four years, and the same day I'm writing this, what? it ranked number 53 on Melon. It it's won still song there, of the year man. at the ninth Melon Music Awards. After the release of Spring Day, they went on yet another tour, the 2017 BTS Live Trilogy, Episode 3, The Wings Tour. The tickets sold out within minutes, including in the United States, the first K-pop artist to do so, and went on wow. to win Best Social Artist at the Billboard Music Awards. See, the this this is when they're starting to like branch out into that Western world, you know what I mean? First for a Korean artist, but they would go on to win this award four years in a row. The next year was a period of massive growth for both the group's popularity as well as their style. They released the Love Yourself series starting with Love Yourself oh. Her in September of 2017, this Love Yourself good. Tear in May of 2018, and Love Yourself Answer in August of 2018. Three albums that gave us some of the most classic BTS songs that we know and love today. Such as <laughs> That's Mike my homie. Oh, here we go. Fake love. Oh. You know, guys, I've said I'm not a big, I'm not a huge fan of that song, but whenever it comes on, I can never help but just sing to it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm a fan of the song, obviously. I think it's a good song. It's not one of my favorites from them, but whenever it comes on, you can't not sing it. For you. Oh, my favorite song. <laughs> This is my favorite BTS song, guys, if you didn't know. Euphoria. Oh my god. And it's of course, just bagger after bagger. All three albums were commercial successes. Her being their first album to top 2 million album sales. But Tear and Answer also did equally well. These three albums, as well as their Japanese album, Face Yourself, proved that they weren't done yet, not even close. During oh, they're time, definitely they not done yet, I can tell you that. Their singles went platinum, they topped charts, they won awards, and not only did they break YouTube records, but they broke records that they themselves set again and again and again. This is the period where BTS really started enjoying global recognition, working with huge Western artists such as Nicki Minaj, Designer, and Steve Aoki. Yeah. It wasn't <laughs> their first time having international features on their songs, but it was definitely the biggest. And even though they were already, without a doubt, the biggest act to ever come out of South Korea, they had their eyes set even higher. They went on tour oh once God. again for the Love Yourself. Dude, see, the thing is, most people, I'm guessing, when they were at this point, were like, okay, this is it. This is the peak. But, like, they had bigger visions, and they envisioned it, which what, which is what made it happen. And, like, look where they are now. World tour. During this tour, they collaborated with Steve Aoki to make the song Wasted on Me. Wasted on me. Notable this is a good song, the first all-English feature. And it also served as a jumping-off point for BTS to gain a following of English speakers. Not that they really needed the help, as they sold out concerts even in the US like of the yeah, tour. Yeah, they already had that. City they already had Queens, that. New York, where tickets sold out in 20 minutes. And, as if that wasn't enough, they dropped the movie in November, Burn the Stage, which in the US alone grossed 3.54 million in the first weekend, breaking the record set by One Direction's movie, This Is Us. In September, RM had the unique opportunity to speak at the United Nations, oh, where he go. spoke of anti-violence and self-love. Two years later, he would be offered to speak on a second occasion about persistence and hope in the face of challenges. And mm -hmm. to top it all off, in October, the president of South Korea awarded every member of BTS the 5th class Hongwon Order of Cultural Merit for outstanding meritorious services in the field of culture and art, which is one of the highest South Korean orders of merit one can receive. And that's no exaggeration. 2019 estimates put BTS's contribution to the South Korean economy to the tune of $4.65 billion each what? year. What? equivalent to 0.3% of the country's GDP. They were the youngest That's ever crazy. received the honor. 2019. That is BTS mad. Awarded. Grammys, Time Magazine, Billboard. BTS entered a new era. Not an era of simply global recognition, but global dominance. April 12th, 2019. Enter Map of the Soul Persona. Oh, first things no. first, you can't mention Map of the Soul Persona oh, no. without mentioning Boy With Love. 
It was oh, simple. Yes. What do you what get when you shoot. cross the singer of one of the best charting songs of all time that went platinum 59 times in 13 different countries with, yep. without a question, the most globally dominant pop group of all time? A tune, well, that's what you get. You get this. Nothing less oh than an instant God. hit. Number eight on Billboard Hot Hits. 100. Platinum in the U.S. 21 music show wins. Number one on iTunes in 67 different countries. The most. <laughs> Dude, this makes me so excited for what's to come. Do you know what I mean? Because there's got to be so many more hits like this in the future. Liked and the most viewed YouTube video in the first 24 hours. The fastest video to reach 100 million views. A current view count of over 1 billion views. Seven boys, one girl, and seven different hair colors. They were the talk of the town, invited to talk show after talk show after talk show. Oh, the second no. single on the album was Make It Right. Oh, I can make it right. Written hey. by Ed Sheeran himself, including a version featuring Lau. The album debuted at number one on Gaon and sold 3.2 million copies its first month, and that's only in Korea. It We're talking big the numbers now. Album in South Korea ever. It swept every major Korean music show, winning album of the year in each one of them. They followed up this legendary EP with the Love Yourself, Speak Yourself World Tour, oh, where they no. sold out both the Rose Bowl and the Wembley Stadium in only an hour. The only oh, I should have been there, dude. I really wish I was there. English speaking act to do so. They even performed Next as a time, solo it's act be even in Saudi bigger. Arabia the first four act to do that. The last stop of their tour was at South Korea's largest venue, the Seoul Olympic Stadium. They ended up grossing $200 million. During this time, they also created a visual million. novel style game for mobile devices called BTS World, where the I've player can this. interact with the I members. To this play also this. Check came it out. with an original soundtrack with tracks unique to the game featuring Western artists. Zara yep. Larson, Charlie XCX, Dude, there's some tunes. Juice there's some for tunes the in this. Brandon Day, Green Glow, and All Night, respectively. In December of 2019, the group swept the grand prizes for both the Melon and Mnet Music Award shows. The first artist to do that. Map of the Soul Persona was legendary. Truly a marvel in modern music. Oh my music. god. So, how could BTS follow up the best how selling you top album that? in South Korean history? How can you top that, right? Easy. Make an even better selling album. And that's what they did with Map of the Soul 7. Oh, the no. album was released on February 21st of 2020, featuring the singles Black Swan. I feel like this is when they properly started going quite classy and quite, you know, very... I don't know how to explain it, but, like, look at the sets and everything like that. This is when it properly, like, took it to another level. Had quite a kind of posh-looking theme, didn't it? Very elegant. And on. And sold over this is where I joined. Million albums this is my the era. first week. And the first Korean album to be certified as quadruple million on the Gaon Music Chart. It debuted at number quadruple one on music million. charts all over the world, including the US, Korea, the UK, Japan, and much of Europe. It's not an exaggeration to say that this album left a permanent mark on the world, launching BTS into legendary status and becoming the best-selling artist in South Korean history. Wow. BTS had scheduled a Map of the Soul tour for April of that year, which would have undoubtedly outsold their record-breaking tour only a year prior. But unfortunately, the COVID pandemic caused the no. entire tour to be postponed, I including the show at the Rose Bowl, which I was supposed to attend. But that didn't stop BTS. I 100% would have been there. Concerts, That's the sad thing, spoke man. at the Dear Class of 2020 graduation event and oh, released yeah. the Japanese version of their recent album with an original Japanese single, Stay Gold. Stay Gold! Dude, this is weird because now we're in the era where, we're in the era that I've actually like experienced these releases and these comebacks. <laughs> And to top it all off, this was only June. At this point, it was clear that BTS had already dominated their home turf, and they had topped the music charts all over the world. World domination time, now. Their sight was set for the very top. Remember that scene in The Social Network where Mark and Sean talk about how they don't want a million dollars, they want a billion dollars. How they're not interested in catching 14 trout, but they'd rather catch an 800 pound marlin? Well, that's you always what they want more. on. The Marlin, the biggest music industry in the world, the United States. United States. And at the top of that music industry, number one on Billboard Hot 100. Oh my God, this small here we go. Group from a company that virtually no one had heard about eight years ago, planned to take on Goliath himself and dominate the American industry on their home turf. And all they had to do was speak English. <laughs> what Yungi wants, Yungi gets. All they have to do is speak English. Oh no, that might be a problem. I mean, not for RM, but... August 21st. Enter dynamite. Oh, here we go. Their first and well, only I, I love how he presented that as well. All they have to do is speak English. Bring on dynamite. Oh. 
single so far. Simultaneously performed better than anyone had expected, but at the same time is exactly what we as an audience had come to expect from the legendary boy band themselves. And they did it. They reached number one on the US Billboard Hot 100, wow. the Global 200, and the Global Excluding US chart. And they made sure that if you hadn't heard of them before, you definitely have now. And if that wasn't yep. already the biggest flex, on October 2nd, they came out with Savage Love BTS Remix with oh, Jason yeah. Rulo. <laughs> Jungkook, what's your language, sir? Getting number one on the Can Billboard I just talk Hot about that? Again, less than two months after already getting it number one with to. Dynamite. And on the Global 200, <laughs> they Look at replaced themselves at number one, the first artist to do so ever. Dude, that's so it. What makes number BTS one, so number special? two. How did they achieve all this? K-pop is a genre that spans for at least 30 years, and there have been hundreds of boy groups and hundreds of girl groups. What did BTS do to rise above all of them and break through to markets never be? I'm going to answer this for him. I think, honestly, a lot of their success is down to how relatable they are and how grounded they are, how talented they are. I mean, it's a lot of things, obviously, like their image, like their, their musical ability, like, and how much they share and how much they allow you into their lives and how much you can relate to them and, like, trust them and they just come across as real people and i think that's a big part of it okay anyway before seen historically the boy band industry has been dominated by white english-speaking bands and the fact that bts has not only held their own but blew any sign of competition out of the water on a global scale can be attributed to nothing less than their talent hard work and a bit of a one in a million miracle they did it through their own blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Around the world, See what you did there. boy bands have pretty much fallen into obscurity, but BTS is thriving. And though I've stated this all before, it's worth saying again, in contrast to other bands who would sing about romantic relationships with girls and what some would call predictable bubblegum pop tunes, mm -hmm. BTS is continuously pushing the envelope and changing their styles. According to an article by Vulture.com, they describe this style as much less a successor of the Backstreet Boys and more of the successors of Michael Jackson, whose choreography and charisma were unprecedented. While of course there's a lot yeah. of love for the angelic vocals of BTS, rap has also played a very important part in creating their own style. And it's just because there's seven of, this is what I said when I first discovered them. I was like, God, this dynamic is so interesting because you've got rap, you've got vocals, like you've got dancing, you've got so many different aspects to look at. Contrast to the there's something for everyone. Where every member sings, it's so refreshing when you're in the middle of a song and you hear RM's raw rapping skills, J-Hope's energy, or Suga's soul put into every single line. Interestingly yeah. enough, at the first glance, it seems that the success of BTS was miraculous, despite not being part of the Big Three. But it can also be argued that their success was because of their separation from the Big Three. Their label, Big Hit Entertainment, whose founder emphasizes artistic freedom more than anything else, allowed them to make their own sound. And going Dude, back to I love that. Artistic freedom. That's what it should be about. Like, allow your artist to present themselves and if if you pick up the right artist then they're just gonna thrive in that bts universe it's not often that a k-pop group does something special with each of their songs and albums utilizing strong storytelling that can go beyond simply the song itself but rather interconnected with other songs and even other albums to create one large overarching story and not only do they all have their own expertise in performance but also each of them have had the experience of writing and producing their own music and they're not afraid to let their style evolve over time bts during their debut is such a Far Cry from Wings era BTS and current day BTS. They also chose to tackle more adult issues instead of simply love and girls. While they definitely didn't have a shortage of those, they also <laughs> cover other very important yeah. issues such as mental They've health, gone through regret, it all, man. following your dreams, hard work, self-love, and men. That's, that's the thing. Like you can make these deep songs about these issues and stuff, but is you know they can they can also do the really just fun you know laid back songs where you are talking about girls and stuff like that, which is you know it's important. Many because songs others. like that. Do Add that to the fact that as fans, we can feel the authenticity of the members themselves. They seem That's it, approachable. Man. BTS seems like there's a place for every type of fan. <laughs> and in this fast-paced world where things change They're at just unthinkable normal. speeds, BTS has stayed grounded and faithful to who they were and who they are. Those kids we saw on American Hustle Life along with their dreams and passions are the same men who stand before us today. And while some artists like to keep their personal lives private, BTS gives us a look at their personal lives exactly, through their vlogs, which allow us to become more connected to them than ever before. I think that's what a large part. What is truly amazing is that, with the exception of just one single, they're doing this all while singing in their native tongue, Korean. Their music holds so much power that it literally- And I think it was a massive moment, obviously, a few weeks ago when Life Goes On, which is primarily a Korean single, went number one on Billboard. Like, that's just telling of everything. Breaks through like, the Dynamite's good enough, language. But... And no, they're not done yet. Today, November 20th, they're releasing their fifth studio album. B 
There's singles on the album, Dynamite, and Life Goes On. And chances are, life will go on for BTS. And chances are, they'll continue to break even more records. They've shown that they're capable of dominating music charts across the world and even reaching across the Pacific Ocean and conquering the music industry in the United States. What's next for them? Mars? In any case, Probably. they only started in 2013. Dude, and next they... music video is going to be on Mars, guys. Elon Musk is going to be directing it. Yes, is as strong as it's ever been. As far as we know, they will only continue to light it up like a dynamite. Oh god, advert coming up, advert coming up. Guys, no, why did you have to ruin the last bit? Oh my god, okay, I'm so sorry. I need ad block, guys, I'll redo. Okay, it's just the credits. Fake love orchestral cover. Dude, can we just talk about how well put together this video is? Like, the Asian Fury, if you guys aren't yet subscribed to him, or like, you haven't watched this video yet, go down, give him another view, give him a subscribe. He definitely deserves it, like, stuff like this, like, it's so well put together, there's so many cuts, there's so many, you know, like, it's so well edited. I know just how long a video like this takes to put together, and especially, like, to structure and everything like that, and know what you're gonna do, and, like, the pacing and stuff, and it was so perfect, man. Such a well put together video, so if you've not yet seen it, make sure you go give it another view. Um, really good, man, really good watch. I mean, I I was kind of hesitant to do it because I know I've done quite a few videos like this in the past of like checking out their story and stuff but this was like this had a lot of stuff which I wasn't even aware of it taught me a lot as well so yeah really good watch man hopefully you guys did enjoy it as always and uh yeah so proud of them man so proud of them and yeah, as always, guys, I really hope you did enjoy today's video. If you did, a like rating down below would be much appreciated. And if you're brand new to my channel, you never seen my face before, you haven't enjoyed these BTS reactions you've been seeing, make sure you are subscribed down below, guys. Click that button, become a part of the family. We do upload these every single day. We have hundreds more over on the channel if you would like to go check them out. Thank you so much. Hopefully, you all have a beautiful rest of your day. Hopefully, you're staying safe with everything that's going on. We'll see you very soon in the next BTS reaction. Peace out.